Hi everyone and welcome to Berwick Baptist Church Online. At this present time, gathering in our buildings has ceased and we won't be gathering in our buildings until possibly mid-January. Uh, the leadership, after much thought and reflection last Thursday, made the decision to cancel our Christmas party, which was Thursday night. Uh, so on the day we were going to have the party, we cancelled it. And we've decided to cancel all our meetings within our building following the government guidelines, which didn't say that we had to close our buildings or stop our services, but we want our church family to be safe. And so we are taking extra precautions at this season because many of our church family were traveling to visit friends and family, and some were having family stay, come and stay with them. So we really want to just be extra careful at this time so that you, as our church family, brothers and sisters, can enjoy Christmas with your families and your friends. And maybe you've already started those celebrations or maybe it's still Christmas Eve. I don't know what time you're listening to this message. Some might listen to it Christmas Eve. Some might listen to it early Christmas morning. Some might listen to it on Boxing Day. It really doesn't matter when you're listening to this message, I'm not expecting you all to get up Christmas morning and say, let's put on the video message from John, our pastor. Um, I'm quite certain that many of you have got the turkey to cook and lots of other things, but wherever you've found a moment just to listen to this message, thank you for taking the time to just pause for a thought because this isn't going to be a long message. I just want to share a thought with you to encourage you for the rest of this Christmas season and for something for you to take into the new year. Um, there's so much happening at Christmas. People get stressed. People are excited. There's the whole range of, of emotions happen at Christmas time and especially because we're living in such strange times. I know I was in the supermarket today and the people before me were talking to the checkout lady and they were not happy because they had already been told that they've got permission to travel during lockdown to work. So they believe a lockdown is coming. Their children have already been told they can't go back to school after the new year. So they're already making preparations for that. So there's just lots of high emotions. They weren't too happy with everything. They know that people as I've been sitting in the Christmas present shop uh, that Churches Together has um, held within one of, the local um, uh, one of the local shops on the top of West Street, which the Methodist Church has headed up. Again, lots of different thoughts about lockdown there. So we have a whole range of people with all different expectations, different thoughts, different feelings, high emotions, anger, frustration, excitement and fear. And when we look at the story when our Lord Jesus was born in Bethlehem, his mother Mary and Joseph, his adopted or stepfather, they would have had the whole range of emotions passing through them. There would have been excitement because God had visited them, both the angels had visited them, and they both knew that Jesus, this baby that was going to be born in Bethlehem, was a very special little boy and they already knew his name or to call him but yet there would have been all sorts of emotions because their family and the people in their community would have been suspicious they wouldn't have had the same revelation that they had they would have been thinking yeah they haven't waited till they they were married and this is an illegitimate child lots of things would be going through their minds and also they lived under a very oppressive um, regime in the sense of the Roman Empire. They were, they were um, part of the Roman Empire and so they had to do what the emperor said, whether they liked it or not. A bit like today, some of us are having to do things which we don't want to do. But as law-abiding citizens and as Christians, we're called to obey our government as long as it doesn't conflict with our scriptures and our faith. Sometimes we're not happy with that, but it's important that we are God-fearing and law-abiding citizens as Christians. 
And so they were, and they were heading to Bethlehem where Jesus, it had been prophesied the Messiah would be born. And so I want to share something from the story of the shepherds. And I'm going to read that and then I'm just going to pick one verse and focus on that for a first to think and meditate upon during the rest of the Christmas season. So I'm reading from chapter 2 of Luke from verse 8 onwards. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go down to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph, the baby, who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. And then we're going to think about this verse. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So here we see prophecy being fulfilled, our Lord Jesus being born in Bethlehem and the angels visit the shepherds, the shepherds go. And so Mary and Joseph were seeing lots of wonderful, miraculous things happen around them. But their circumstances were still filled with fear and concern because, as we know the story, when the wise men came, the, sh the kings came and give their gifts and that, Herod finds out and he wants to kill baby Jesus. But God warns the, sh uh, the kings to go a different way and then God wakes Joseph in a dream. The angel comes and tells him to take Mary quickly out of Bethlehem and to head into Egypt until it was safe. So there was lots of things happening. It wasn't safe for Jesus and his parents to be there at that time. But notice the thing that Mary did about the things she saw and heard that God was doing and God was saying to other people. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. You know, as God's people, you and I, regardless of the circumstances we're in, it doesn't matter how worrying a time we might be in or how stressed or different things might be happening all around us. God wants us to ponder and to treasure the wonderful things that he's done in our lives in the past and even in the circumstances that we are in. He wants us to learn to treasure the answers to prayers that we've seen. He wants us to treasure the wonderful things about the Christmas story, the things that we hear about Jesus. And one of the things that I've been pondering and thinking about over this past week is the word Emmanuel. It's the name that was given to Jesus. It means God with us. I want you to think, to treasure and to ponder that phrase, Emmanuel, God with us. If God is really with us, if God is really in our hearts and in our lives, what a difference that should make. Now, if you're like me, and sometimes you don't always ponder these wonderful truths and realities, you get focused on the pressures that come and the circumstances that press in. And even at Christmas time, we get caught up on all the Christmas frenzy to get the presents, to get the turkey, to have everything ready for our families coming. But do we stop in all that busyness of Christmas, in all the worry and the fear of lockdown and what that might mean, 
and ponder the real Christmas message, Emmanuel, God is with us. When Jesus was born, he is God. And he came to earth as a man, as a little baby boy. And that young couple, in all the stress and all the things that was happening around them, God was working there. And he gave them indications through the shepherds, through the kings, through lots of things, that his hand was on them. But that doesn't take away the natural emotions and the worry and the stress of life. Often, you know, there are, you can experience the miraculous. You can, you can experience even an angel coming and visiting you one day and you can be on the mountaintops. The next day, you're in the doldrums. We see that with the, the prophet Elijah. One day he was on Mount Carmel calling down fire. God was with him. The next day he was running from Jezebel and he was in depression. Because we live in broken bodies and broken lives. But God wants you and me this Christmas to ponder, to learn the art of treasuring and pondering the Christmas message. What does it mean to you, to dear Emmanuel? God is with us. God's with you in that kitchen to help you cook that turkey. God's with you in your house, helping you celebrate Christmas with your family and your friends. God's with you if you're in the hospital today and you can't celebrate Christmas with your family and friends. God's with you if you're by yourself and you're not celebrating Christmas with anybody. God is with you. When you realise that God is with you, what a difference it makes. What a wonderful difference it makes. You know, I never get lonely. I feel alone. There's times I feel alone. And it's not wrong to feel alone because at those times you do need fellowship, you need company. But many years ago, when I first got my first flat, I remember I was in the bathroom cleaning and, and getting things ready, moving in. And I felt the Lord say to me, John, whenever you're lonely, come to me. Spend time with me and I'll take away that loneliness. And I used to be a very, very lonely person. I was haunted with loneliness. I hated loneliness. It was something that ate away at you. You felt nobody wanted you, nobody loved you, nobody was there for you. But when God spoke that into my heart, whenever I used to feel lonely, I would go and meet God in his word and take time to praise and worship God and, and to pray and to seek him. And God healed me and took the pain of loneliness away so I never, ever get lonely now. Never. I love being by myself because I know I'm not by myself, I'm with Jesus. But there are moments when I'm alone. And when I feel alone, which isn't loneliness, I know it's time just to have fellowship with brothers and sisters and go and visit somebody. You know, God doesn't want you to be lonely. He wants you to remember, Emmanuel, God is with you today. I'm going to pray God's blessing on you and I hope you have a very, very happy Christmas wherever you are. If you're by yourself, if you're with family and friends, remember you're part of this church family and we want you to be loved and we want to be friends and, and, and be with you. And maybe it means you mean to take a step more closer to your brothers and sisters to feel that love because relationships are a two-way street. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters. I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are the true spirit of Christmas. You are Emmanuel. Fill our hearts, clothe them with power, fill them with joy. And may this Christmas time be such a time of great happiness wherever they are. And may your blessing rest on their homes. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Happy Christmas.